see what is in your heart in abundance. Now, so many times people start confessing the Word. They confess it a few days, and then they give up because nothing happened. The first stage of confessing the Word of God is doing very little to change the situation. First thing it'll do is renew your mind to the Word of God. It will cause faith to come, but it has to be in your heart in abundance before you can speak words that change things. Now, the first thing your words are doing is changing you and renewing your mind. Renews your mind, gets you to thinking like God thinks. And I challenge you to just write down the scriptures that uh, would produce the faith, that you, whatever you're believing for. Confess it daily aloud. I mean, uh, get by yourself and just speak it out loud daily, over and over and over and over. Thank God for it. It'll get on the inside of you. And before long, you'll have the feeling, hey, it's mine. It's mine. And that's really what Mark eleven twenty three 23 said. Whosoever shall say, believe, doubt not in his heart, believe what he is saying will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. The Greek says it different than that. It says, believe that he has received, past tense, when he prayed, well, when he prayed or said, either way, believe the original Greek says, you've got it. You've laid hold on it. You've got it. Do you have the manifestation of it right then? No. See, you, that's why you have to be fully persuaded. Because you'll hear people say, well, I'm going to try that. You know what a trier does? They do it till it looks like it's not working. If you're going to try it, you're going to fail. You have to make a decision, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to do it. You know, when I heard this message, it never occurred to me that it wouldn't work because I like that cat hanging on that rope at the last knot at the end of the rope. You've seen that poster said, hang in there, baby. I mean, uh, it never occurred to me it might not work because I found out Jesus said it. And I tell you, you can bank on what Jesus said. Now, it may not look like it's working. Everything around you may say it's not working. Everybody around you may say it's not working. But if you're doing what Jesus said to do, it's working. But it takes time. It takes time to renew your mind. It takes time to get faith in your heart in abundance. Now, I had a, I had a series one time, and, and it's called, well, I still have. It's called Words, Faith, and Things. God's Word produces the faith for the things that God has given us. Now, see, the critics of the faith message said, well, they're just trying to bankrupt God. You know, they think we're going to bankrupt God with our faith. Well, you can't get anything from God that he hasn't given you by faith. The only way you have access into the grace of God is through faith. You can't even get born again without faith. And some of them will say, well, you know, there's more to the Bible than faith. Well, certainly there is. There's a lot more to the Bible than faith, but none of it will work without faith. That's the only way you can enter into the grace of God. It's through faith. Paul tells you that three or four times in his writings in, in the fifth chapter of, uh, of Romans. He, he talks about uh, we have access by grace by faith, into this grace wherein you stand. You have access by faith into this grace wherein you stand. That's the only way you have access into the grace of God. When people try to think they have merited favor with God because, well, I've been so good and I've gone to Sunday school and I've paid my tithes and, and I know God will heal me. That's high expectation based on wrong information. Not one scripture in the whole Bible that would validate that kind of thinking because they think they merit favor. Mm -mm. Paul said if, if you're trying to get uh, do under the works of the law, you're under the curse. You're under the curse. 
I don't want to be under the curse. So it's faith where we have access into the grace of God. Thank God for the grace of God. We want to plead grace and mercy. We don't want what we deserve, do we? <laughs> grace, mercy and grace. <clears throat> so uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So God's Word produces the faith for the things that God has already given us. Now, they already belong to us. It's just like the bank accounts you have downtown. The provision's made. It's in the bank. It's your money. It belongs to you. But you could live and die and never benefit one iota from that money in the bank unless you make a demand on it. I mean, you go down there and tell them, well, if my money's not too busy, I'd like to get $100. <laughs> well, all right, sign a check here. No, I don't want to sign anything. It's my money, isn't it? Yeah, it's your money. Uh, well, just give me $100. No, we can't do that. Well, it's my money, isn't it? Yeah, it's your money, all right. But there's a certain way that you draw it out. And if you don't make a demand on it with a demand note, which is a check, you don't get it. Now, see, people misunderstand sometimes. They think, why, well, you're demanding of God. No, making demand on the provision that he's already made. You make on a, uh, a demand on God's provision for healing. You make a demand on it. You're not demanding of God. He's already done it. He sent his word and healed and delivered them from their destruction. What was his word? Jesus. And he delivered. Not going to. He's already done it. So we just make a demand on the provision. And that's, that's the way you do with the promises of God. And, and just because it says it in the Bible or promises it doesn't mean it's going to happen to you just because it's in the Bible. You have to make a demand on it, act on it, and proclaim it until you can see it on the inside. Remember, God said, and God saw. God said, and God saw. Now, if that's the way he operated and he created us in his own image and in his likeness, that's the way it's going to work. And that's the way that Jesus taught it. Whosoever shall say, believe, doubt not in his heart. Believe what he's saying will come to pass. He shall have. Actually, he has it when he believes it without reservation. You notice that it said of Abram, Abraham, Abraham was fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able to perform. And it wasn't written for his sake alone, but written for our sake. So we would know that the man was fully persuaded. What's it mean to be fully persuaded? It means that he doesn't cast out the word when it, does, it looks like it's not working. Now I started to say this while I go, and I got sidetracked. Uh, Abraham and Sarah didn't go around and say, no, we're not old, we're not old, no, we're not old. There's no power in denying what exists. Some people got the idea in the early 70s when the word was taught that if you're sick, you've got to say you're not sick. You deny sickness. They'd be coughing, sneezing, and had the flu. And somebody said, well, see, you got the flu. No, no, don't have the flu. Thank God I'm healed. I feel fine. I'm wonderful. I'm doing great. <laughs> They'd cough it. See, they, they misunderstood the faith message, and, uh, and, and they thought denying it was going to get them healed. No, no. The calling for what you don't have. What is it they didn't have? They didn't have healing. So what do you do? Call for it. Thank God I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Now, you don't want to go around confessing you're sick either. You know, like somebody said, well, I'm sick. I always get sick this time of the year. Dear God, I'm sick as a horse. That means big sick, you know. <laughs> well, why don't you want to say that? Because faith cometh to hearing. And you heard yourself say, I'm sick. How many times have you ever heard somebody say, every time I eat that, it makes me sick? I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Jesus said you can have what you say. And you said what you have. And as long as you have what you say and say what you have, you're going to have what you say because you said what you have. <laughs> now, that's God's method. Man didn't choose this method. God chose this method. So God's Word produces a faith for the things that He's given you. But now, when faith is abundantly in the heart, then you speak words 
that produce the things that God has given you. See, the first stage is doing very little to cause change of circumstance. It's causing faith to come. God's Word produces the faith for the things that God has given us. But when faith is abundantly in the heart, then we speak words because of our faith that changes things. And when you get highly developed in it, you better set a watch on your mouth. And, and you don't ever get to the point you don't watch your mouth. Because the more highly developed you get in believing what you say will come to pass, the quicker it'll come about. I remember years ago when I was getting this in my spirit, we had bought a new car, and, and I said to my wife, we better put, uh, put a key under the car somewhere because one of us is going to lock the keys in the car one of these days. She said, I won't. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of wanted to slap her, you know, because that didn't leave anybody but me. I said, well, you know, I I'm, I'm, didn't mean to make a bad confession, but that, it's just a reality, you know. And uh, I said it again. And it wasn't a week till I was going to Little Rock to the, to the lawyer's office, and I jumped out, and I was listening to a Kenneth Copeland tape. You can have what you say. <laughs> I jumped out of the car and slammed the door, and I heard my voice say, one of us is going to lock the keys in the car. <laughs> oh, no. It didn't take but a week till I did what I said. I looked in the car, and there they were, the keys in the car. I had to call her and say, would you bring me there the set of keys? <laughs> One of us locked the keys in the car. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, you learn to zip your lip when you get highly developed. Now, now sometimes people will say, well, now, Brother Caps, I don't understand it. If I ever make a bad confession, it happens overnight. Sometimes I have to confess it for weeks and months before the good things come to pass. I understand it. You're more highly developed in the negative than you are the positive. That's why you have to renew your mind to the Word of God. If you say what God said long enough about any subject, you will start thinking like God thinks about that subject. Now, it's important to say it audibly. You know, sometimes people just say, oh, yeah, I read that little book, the confession book. Hey, that's a workbook. You don't just read it. You confess it audibly over and over and over and over and over. Why? In your mouth and in your heart. It's like a, a generator. The more it turns, the more it produces energy. And, and the word is filled with faith. If you're going to get it on the inside of you, you get it in your mouth. In your mouth and in your heart. Turn there. I've talked all about it, but turn there to Romans, the 10th chapter. I want you to see it in your Bible. We, have, we haven't even turned to it. <clears throat> hey, remember last night we talked about Abram, or Abraham, <clears throat> He says, the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham and his seed through the law, but through the righteousness which is of faith. Now, notice that phrase. It was through the righteousness which is of faith. Now, let, let's look right here at verse 5. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man that doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith, same phrase that he uses in Romans 4, the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. First, he tells you what it wouldn't say. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above? Who shall descend into the deep that is to bring Christ again from the dead? Now, you might say, well, who in the world would say that? We've all said it one way or the other. Have you ever said, uh, Lord, if you just come down and touch me, I'd get healed? Well, you're going to have to reverse the process to get Jesus back in his physical body, get him down here. Uh, you know, that's what Paul is saying. Now, he gets this from the Old Testament, uh, uh, Deuteronomy, the 30, 
what is it, 30th chapter or 31st chapter is where it gets this. Uh, it's not in heaven that thou should go over there to get it and do it. The word is nigh you. So what Paul's saying here, it says, uh, the righteousness which is a faith would, wouldn't say, well, now if Jesus would come back, he could, he could get me out of this situation. No, Paul said the righteousness which is a faith wouldn't say that, but here's what it would say. Verse 8, what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word even is added by the translator. It's in thy mouth and in thy heart. It's in your mouth and in your heart. Did you notice it didn't say it's in your pastor's mouth and in your heart? In your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Paul called the Word of God the Word of Faith because that is what it is, the Word of Faith. That's the reason Paul talked about uh, uh, the faith of Jesus Christ. It's his faith because it was he, he was the Word, and that's where the faith was, was in the Word. So when you get it from the Word, you've got the faith of Jesus Christ. And that's what it says in, in uh, uh, Mark 11, uh, 23. Have the God kind of faith or the faith of God. In the beginning was the Word, Word with God, the Word was God, the Word made flesh and dwelt among us. It's the God kind of faith because it's the Word. The Word and God are one. And the Word produces faith. The faith is resident in the Word. The faith is resident in God. And if we'll speak God's word after him. Now listen to what I'm going to say here. This may shock some of you. You give voice to God's word. That may be the only audible voice of God you'll ever hear. But it's no less powerful. God's word has not lost any of its power. It's still as powerful when God said it. Let them have dominion, and them are going to have dominion, or us, we are going to have dominion the same way that he had dominion, by speaking in line with the Word of God. What God said is spiritual law. Now, whether it looks like it is or not, it is spiritual law. It is the law of change. It is the law of God. Everybody understands the law of gravity. Nobody argues with that anymore. Been a few of them tried it, but it didn't work. I don't have time to get into it, but the law of faith is a law. It's the law of change. And that law, it, it's the way the Lord explained to me one time, he said, uh, it, it's like confession of the Word of God is like thrust is to an airplane. You can sit there on the end of that runway and pray for lift to get on that wing till the tires rot off of that airplane and there's going to be no lift on that wing. Same way, you can pray for faith till you die. You're not going to get faith by praying for it unless you pray the Word. Now, if you pray the Word, it'll produce faith. But not one scripture in the Bible said, ask God and He'll give you more faith. The disciples tried, the apostles tried that. And you know what Jesus said to them? He said, give us more faith. He said, if you had faith as a seed, you would say, In other words, if you, he tells them that faith works like a seed and the way you plant it is to say it. He said, you don't need more faith. What you need to do is use what you have. and It'll produce more faith. Plant it and it'll produce more. The more you say it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you say it. That airplane wing is designed to produce lift. Now that airplane wing will not do away with the law of gravity. The law of gravity is still in effect, which generally says that everything heavier than air is going to stay on the ground, everything being normal. But we're going to set two laws in motion that's going to supersede the law of gravity, and that thing will fly like a bird. Pastor and I were out looking at the airplane this afternoon, and, and uh, that, that airplane was full of fuel, books and tapes, and a couple of three people in it, will weigh about six and a half tons. 
Now, are we expecting that thing to fly like a bird? And the law of gravity says that if it's heavy in air, it's going to stay on the ground, everything being normal. But everything's not going to stay normal because they have designed a wing shape on that airplane that if you thrust it through the air fast enough, it will create enough lift to cause that thing to overcome or supersede the law of gravity and fly like a bird. You're not going to do away with the curses of, on this earth until you're Satan's off of this planet. You're not going to do away with sickness and disease until Satan is banished from this planet. It came with him, it'll leave with him. But through the law, spiritual law of the Word of God, you can overcome or supersede the curses. And you start down that runway. My runway is a grass runway. And uh, I extended the runway uh, a year or so ago, but for years I flew off a 2,500-foot runway with a 421. And it took about 2,300 feet of that to produce enough lift for that thing to fly. And sometimes I was praying, I hope this runway goes to Dallas. You know, I mean, <laughs> hot summertime, you, 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 you really put your faith out there on something that you can't see. You can't see any lift on that wing. I mean, you get three-fourths of the way down that runway, or you're going to pull the throttles back and say, flying don't work today. No, you're not going to do that. Are you going to wipe out salt by on the other end or the ditch on the other end? Now, why don't I pull the throttles off of that thing and just get on the brakes and say, flying doesn't work. I have too much knowledge to do that. I'm dealing with a law. I have a manufacturer's handbook in that airplane that tells you what temperature the air is. It'll tell you exactly how many feet down that runway it takes to produce enough lift to cause that thing to fly. And it'll work every time without fail. Why? It's a law. It doesn't do away with the law of gravity. It supersedes the law of gravity. And see, when we're talking about faith and overcoming the problems and situations of life, sometimes people think, ah, oh, these folks are just out there in la-la land. No, we're dealing with spiritual law. We're dealing with God's M.O. and God's method. This is God's idea. It wasn't our idea. But you're going down that runway. We're we halfway down that runway, you know, uh, two-thirds of the way down that runway uh, yesterday morning. And grasshoppers hitting the windshield. Grass are flying. Curses there, bugs, you know, still there. But when we get down that runway till it creates enough lift on that wing. That thing just flying like a bird. We get up there and soar. Boy, there is some supercharged bugs, too. I was telling the pastor this afternoon, we, we had a spot on the windshield about that big. At 11,000 feet, we hit a bug. Must have been a demon-inspired bug. I don't know. How in the world he got 11,000 feet high? But he don't have the guts to do that again. Huh? <laughs> but you see, we're dealing with a law here. We can't see any lift on that wing. We can't see how in the world this thing is going to fly with all this much weight. But we have too much knowledge to get halfway down the runway and pull the power back. Because... And here's what the Lord said. He said, your confession of the Word of God is to your faith like thrust is to an airplane. You pull back on the power or, the, or your confession, you're going to lose lift. You get up there flying. You can pull that power back quite a bit because you've got the thing wide open going down that runway. And you can fly at cruise and go real good, but you keep pulling that power back, pulling that power back, pulling that power back. Well, I'm going to save more gas. I'm going to pull it way on back. Yeah, in a little bit, you're going to come down, too. And the Lord said to me one time, he said, I said, Lord, why aren't things going like they were a few years ago? He said, check up on what you were doing a few years ago. I was confessing the Word regularly, daily, daily, daily.
Thank you so much for joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. Now, we're talking about faith, and the law of faith is important to the Christian because uh, Paul called faith law in Romans, the third chapter. If we don't understand the law of faith, then we can't operate in the principles of God to a, a great degree of success. Uh, we have an offer this week. It's offer number 2246. It's called the law of faith. For $12 plus $4 postage and handling, two audio cassettes in an album, and they'll be a blessing to you. Uh, I use the illustration on these tapes of uh, flying an airplane. An airplane is designed to produce its own lift, and your confession of the God's Word produces faith in you. And when you go down that runway with that airplane, there's no lift on the wing of that plane until you add thrust to it. When you thrust it down the runway, the wing is designed to create its own lift. God's Word is designed to create faith, but it's by confessing the Word that caused the faith to come. And uh, you could sit there in that airplane and pray to the tires right, right off of it, and there'll be no lift on the wing until you apply the power. And when you confess the Word of God, say what God said in His Word about you, it creates faith. So this is what we deal with in these two audio cassettes, is the law of faith and how to apply it in your life. It'll be a blessing to you. That's offer number 2246, the law of faith. And we have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400, and that's offer number 2246. That toll-free order line is 1-877-396-9400. <clears throat> Pardon me. Until next time, this is Charles Caps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. We're glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. To order the product offered on today's program, send your check or money order to Charles Capps Ministries. Or to place your order on Visa or MasterCard, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area.